This end stage kidney disease patient is avoiding dialysis today. All thanks to simple foods. Here is what they are. An 81-year-old man, stage 5 CKD, is starting his first dialysis session. But something is wrong. The dialysis fluid caused an inguinal hernia. He can't do dialysis anymore. With very little residual kidney function, this man understands that there is only one thing to do for him. Find an alternative to dialysis. He starts to search the internet and eventually he comes up with a plan. And well, it worked. He was able to avoid dialysis and to stay stable in stage 4 for 3 years. What we will see today is what this man is eating to avoid dialysis. Catherine here, I've been helping CKD patients taking control of their health for more than a decade now. And today, what I want to share with you is a success story. So imagine this, the unthinkable happened. You are in stage 5. Nothing more to do except start dialysis. You start to get informed about it and you follow a course. You are ready. But even dialysis fails you. Now, what's left when even dialysis fails? Okay, here's where it gets interesting. With diet and lifestyle changes, you are back in stage 4 and you are stable for 3 years with a huge improvement in GFR levels. Now, imagine that this is not just a story. This really happened. You see, this is a case study published on a peer-reviewed medical journal, the World Journal of Nephrology and Urology. Amazing, isn't it? And not just because this story is 100% true, but also because we have access to all the records and all the info about how this stage 5 patient is avoiding dialysis. And there is a lot we can learn from this case study. So what I want to focus on today are the foods this man is eating and the supplements he is taking. Because what this paper proves is that they are the key to avoid dialysis. And guys, if you think this is interesting, give this video a like and consider sharing it with a friend. Because you see, this man is still out of dialysis today and he is still thriving thanks to the kidney-saving diet he discovered. This is a really recent publication we are looking at and they follow the patient until 2023. So this 81-year-old man started peritoneal dialysis in 2019. But that didn't work for him and he had to find an alternative by himself. A diet. So the big question is, what diet is this man following in order to avoid dialysis in stage 5? Can you guess what diet makes you avoid dialysis? I'm wondering, maybe a raw meat diet? Or a keto diet? Or a carnivore diet? So can you guess what is the only diet that can keep a stage 5 patient out of dialysis? And yeah, the answer is the low-protein diet, a diet with all animal protein removed. So not a keto, but the complete opposite of a keto. Because as we can see here, as soon as he removed all animal protein and he replaced them with a little bit of plant-based protein, he didn't need dialysis anymore. Again, guys, this is coming from a peer-reviewed journal, all right? It actually happened. It's 100% documented that you need to limit protein in order to delay dialysis. 
So if you are itching right now to go in comment section and write 5,000 words post about how you cannot improve your kidney function if you don't eat enough liver meat or half-life grass fed animals or whatever it is, the fat diet du jour, please, please also post a peer-reviewed study to support what you say, all right? Otherwise, I'm sorry, but I will not be able to take you very seriously, okay? Just a little heads up here. Science says that if you are a stage 5 patient and you want to delay dialysis, you need a low protein diet. There is no other way. You will find zero proof in medical literature that the CKD stage 5 patient can survive without dialysis on a high protein diet or on a keto or a carnivore diet. You have no proof. But hey, if you can find a study that proves me wrong, please share it with me. Or keep watching because it's time now to see what foods this man is eating exactly to avoid dialysis. One of the main points on which this paper focuses on is protein intake. Protein control really is the cornerstone of the renal diet today. Not up about it. So the stage 5 patient and his doctor removed all the protein coming from animal foods and replaced it with just a little bit of protein from plants, but not too much. Keep in mind that every single patient must have a personalized protein intake, all right? And my advice to you is know what your prescribed daily protein intake is very well and stick to it, just like this 81-year-old patient is doing. But this doesn't mean you must completely avoid protein, just animal-based protein. In fact, he is actually eating some plant-based protein, especially from legumes and grains. Okay, now you may ask, but I thought beans and legumes were forbidden in a renal diet? Well, they actually were, for a while, but not anymore. You see, today, legumes are considered superfoods when it comes to kidney health. And some legumes you may consider adding to your diet include chickpeas. Also known as garbanzo beans, chickpeas are a great source of fiber and a staple in many cuisines. They are used to make hummus, a super tasty and healthy spread. And they are also high in resistant starch. This is a type of fiber that resists digestion in the small intestine and reaches the large intestine, nourishing the bacteria that live in our gut. Now, if you follow me here regularly, you probably already know that gut health is key for kidney health. And this superfood is especially good for those with diabetes. Hummus was studied in particular because it's a source of carbs that do not compromise insulin levels. Another legume you may want to consider, soybeans. Soybeans are commonly consumed in Asia in several different forms, including tofu and edamame. While they have many of the health benefits of other legumes, there is one reason why soybeans may be particularly great in a renal diet. They are one of the only plant-based sources of protein that is also of high biological value, which means they have all the essential amino acids in them. A patient who is strictly limiting their protein intake may highly benefit from getting a little bit of protein from this food. And yes, all these legumes are also rich in protein, so moderation is key when adding beans and legumes to your diet. But there is one type of bean you can actually eat without worries. Green beans. Also called string beans, these legumes are way lower in protein and calories compared to any other legume, which means you can eat them more often. What green beans are rich in is antioxidants very important in order to help protect your kidneys from oxidative stress. Keep in mind that oxidative stress is a powerful cause of kidney damage. And beans and legumes contain various antioxidants such as polyphenols, flavonoids, anthocyanins, carotenoids, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, zinc, and manganese. These antioxidants can help scavenge free radicals the cause of oxidative stress and repair cellular damage. And guys, antioxidants are way more important than people realize. 
says a very recent meta-analysis published on the Cochrane Library. With an antioxidant therapy, it seems to be possible to actually improve kidney function. And while the antioxidants you can get from the diet from foods such as beans are great, you may also want to add certain vitamins and other nutrients. If you want to know more, my video up here and also down in the description is for you. But don't go away yet, there is more about the diet of this man that has beaten dialysis. Let's talk about grains. Question: What are some of the healthiest grains for a renal diet? There are some low GI complex carbs that are exceptionally healthy, such as bulgur. Bulgur is one of the whole grain wheat products that are the lowest on phosphorus and this is crucial for people with kidney disease. You don't want to overload your kidneys with too much phosphorus, right? Bulgur is also a good source of B vitamins, magnesium, iron, and manganese. It's also full of dietary fiber, which is important for the digestive tract. Make it a regular on your table. You can use it to make salads, soups, pilafs, and more. Another whole grain, low both on the GI scale and in phosphorus is wild rice. Wild rice is not really rice, it's a whole grain. This means that it has a lower glycemic index and a lot more fiber, nutrients, and vitamins compared to any other type of rice. It's also lower in phosphorus than brown rice and it comes with many health benefits. Wild rice can contain as much as 30 times the antioxidants as white rice. You can cook wild rice like regular rice or use it to make casseroles, stuffing, and more. Now guys, many other options are available when it comes to grains. Many patients also eat pasta and rice and bread as a part of their diet. These foods may be useful to reach your target of calories and carbohydrates every day. Now, especially for people following a very low protein diet, another great addition may be a pratic pasta. A pratic pasta is the product especially developed for people with kidney problems that have troubles limiting their protein intake. Some brands also add renal vitamins to their products. Now guys, this case study didn't mention what fruits and veggies he is eating other than grains and legumes, but don't worry, I got you covered. If you want to know more about what veggies, fruits, nuts, and more are proven to help you beat kidney disease, I recently made a full video about it. It's up here and also down in description. Now, very important, some of the foods we have seen can be eaten regularly, but some legumes especially, I recommend eating in moderation, all right? Because they contain protein and we need to limit protein intake. But a little bit of protein is supposed to be a part of a renal diet, just not from animals. A question now, why is avoiding animal protein key to avoid dialysis? You see, this paper goes really in-depth in explaining why protein from animals is bad for you, while protein from plants is a lot better. And one of the reasons why this happens is because you get a lot less protein from plant-based foods than you get from animal-based foods, while getting a lot more fiber, antioxidants, and other nutrients. Keep in mind that restricting protein intake is our number one goal when it comes to the renal diet. But there is more to plant-based protein. This study also points out that plant-based foods have other benefits for CKD patients. You see, these three points we see here are the reason why this 81-year-old man is avoiding dialysis. First, reduced urea production. Protein metabolism produces urea which accumulates in CKD and damages the kidneys. This is something we measure as bun levels. When the patient started to avoid animal protein, this bun dropped from 85 to 54 milligrams per dl. And that's a huge drop. So if your bun is too high, consider reducing your protein intake. But there is more. Ammonia. Another byproduct of protein digestion, toxic to the body that can be reduced by reducing protein intake, as we can see. Even more important, the acid load. 
Now, this brings us to the one of the most important aspects of this man's journey with end-stage kidney failure, the supplementation. So question, what supplement is a man who was able to get out of dialysis using? Well, one of the key aspects of managing end-stage kidney disease is balancing the acid load. And while the diet plays a crucial part in this, Sometimes it's not enough and it's not a surprise that he is also taking sodium bicarbonate 325 milligrams twice per day in order to keep his serum sodium bicarbonate level at a minimum of 22 milli equivalents per liter. Because as this case study points out, taking sodium bicarbonate may be key to avoid dialysis. So a question for you, are you keeping your serum sodium bicarbonate level in the right range? If you are not sure, I've actually made a full video about this. It's up here and also down in the description. Or if you want to see more success stories like this one, this video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.